I'm going to show you how I took this foam board installation and turned it into these lightweight foam cabinets. Stay tuned. <laughs> Hello, I'm Nomadic Billy Goat. Welcome back to the channel and to part two of the Rebuild the Box series, Foam Cabinets. First, let's talk about something important when it comes to living in a small space. Storage, that's right. Now, when I originally built the box, some of the materials I used were repurposed for my garage, like pieces of lumber for various things. This large steel truck box and these shelves. I wanted to keep a more open layout, but this was, of course, before I had even built or lived in something like this. The shelves served their purpose, but they are not neat, and sometimes things fall off while I'm driving. The large steel truck box is heavy, also rarely used, even though it is filled with stuff. The bed needs to be in the upright position in order to access it. Since living for two years in this box truck RV, I've decided I needed change. I got this idea from a fellow YouTuber I had met on my previous road trip in New Orleans, Louisiana called Nomad. Basically, he had taken foam board installation and created an entire inner structure custom fit to his van that locked together and created a strong lightweight skeleton. A foam bone system, as he calls it. I decided just to make cabinets. The plan is to make four total cabinets, a four foot and a three foot cabinet along this wall, replacing this large shelf, a four foot cabinet in this corner once all of this is removed, and a smaller cabinet for my shower wall, which will replace this smaller shelf. Always start out with a plan. I used graph paper to accurately draw out what the dimensions will be for each cabinet. Now on to building these cabinets. Step one, cutting out the pieces to form the cabinet. I'm using one inch XPS foam board insulation. For this, I used a hot knife that I got off Amazon for about $20. This hot knife has a long rigid blade suited for long straight cuts. There is another type of hot knife that uses a wire for more detailed cuts, but we're not going to need that for this project. You can also use a utility knife, but that's going to take way too long. Just get a hot knife, you'll thank me later. So after you have all the pieces cut out to the sizes they need to be, now it's time to notch them. Step two, as you can see here, the two flat sides that meet have nothing holding them together. And there are only two sides that touch, making this a weak design. Now, when you notch two pieces, they hold together even without adhesive. And there are more areas in which each piece contacts the other, making this a stronger design. At first, I measured out each notch and cut them out but then realized I can make this process faster by aligning two pieces together and drawing lines across both pieces, then taking a scrap piece of foam and drawing lines for the depth of the notches. After cutting all the notches out, I put the cabinet together as a dry fit to make sure nothing else needed trimming. Step three, gluing the cabinet together. There are several different kinds of glues and adhesives. The best glue for this project is Gorilla Construction Adhesive. This adhesive is very strong, doesn't run, and doesn't expand when drying, which would distort the cabinet. Also, this adhesive dries somewhat flexible, which is perfect for a cabinet in an RV, where it is constantly going through an earthquake, also known as driving. I apply adhesive to every part that two pieces touch together. Once gluing is finished, I took painter's tape and used it to hold everything together while it dries. Step four, after it's dry, I cut out the openings in the cabinet.
Once the openings in the cabinets are cut out, it's time for step five, painting and screening. This part of the project creates more strength and durability. As you see here, the piece of plain foam with a gallon placed on it. compared to a piece of foam painted and screened on one side. The idea is to encapsulate the cabinet in screen while the paint holds it there. The screen used is the same as on a screen door or windows. I'm pretty sure any kind of paint would work, but I use Glidden Grab and Go, which was about $30 a gallon at Walmart. Apparently Glidden Gripper paint is the best to use for this type of project. However, it is seemingly discontinued. Anyway, I cut the screen out to fit around the cabinet, then painted the outside of the cabinet before applying screen to the cabinet and then painting over the screen that is on the cabinet. Right? Right. Just watch. Step six. Okay, so now we're at the point where we can cover these cabinets with something that looks a bit better. Not only will it look better, but it will be more structural depending on what you use. You can use wood veneer, plywood, paneling, whatever you want. Originally, I attempted to use contact paper, but that didn't come out like I had hoped. So I ended up using gray paneling. As you see here, the piece of plain foam with a gallon placed on it. Compared to a piece of foam painted and screened on one side. Compared to a piece of foam painted, screened and paneled on one side. When covering these cabinets, I decided to cover only the sides that would be showing after installation. For example, the top and the back won't be covered since it will be against the wall and ceiling. I cut each piece out, keeping the pattern consistent. Then I applied FRP adhesive to the panel before installing them on the cabinet. Once the panels are adhered to the cabinet and they are dry, it's time for step seven, molding. I was trying to decide what I wanted to do for this part of the project, but I wanted to keep the theme consistent with the rest of the box. Since I used gray paneling, wood grain wouldn't have looked very good. So I figured white would be the way to go. When purchasing trim from the store, the white painted trim was $26 per eight foot piece, as the plain wood grain trim was only $9. So I got a bunch of plain wood grain trim and a small can of white paint and decided to make my own white trim. I measured and cut each piece of trim, laid it all out on the table and painted each one. Then install the trim onto the cabinets using the Gorilla Construction Adhesive. Then use painter's tape to hold the trim in place for it to dry. Step eight, doors. There are a lot of options when it comes to utilizing different materials to make a door for a cabinet. With that being said, I wanted to have a more durable door due to the abuse that it would take from opening and closing constantly. 
I decided to use MDF for my doors since it was a nice smooth finish and a very durable piece of lumber. Once I had my measurements, I proceeded to cut the doors out of this 4x8 sheet of MDF. Once all eight doors were cut out, I proceeded to take my sander and dole down the corners and the edges. Step 9. Hinges and Handles There are so many different types and styles of hinges and handles. I decided on these hinges even though I wanted black and these handles. I wanted to get these doors lined up to the cabinets with the hinge and the handle holes pre-drilled before paint. First I measured and figured out where the hinges were going to go onto the cabinet. To mount these hinges I drilled holes for the hinge, then took these screw anchors, cut the tip off, and used Gorilla Glue Original Formula in the hole as I screwed them in. The reason for this setup is these anchors work the best in terms of strength and because I'm anchoring into foam, I used Gorilla Glue Original Formula because it expands while drying, dries hard and rigid. Therefore, if it were to be pulled out, it would take a lot of strength and also a larger area or chunk would need to be pulled out as well since it expands into the foam. Once the anchors are in and dry and the holes in the doors are drilled, it's time for step 10, painting and finishing the doors. Like I said before, I wanted to drill the holes before I painted to make sure that the finish wouldn't get messed up. Either way, I painted one side, then flipped them over and painted the other with the same paint that I used in the painting and screening process. After everything is dry, the hinges and handles can be installed, then the doors can be installed onto the cabinets. I must say, these look pretty good. They are strong and very lightweight. These took a lot of time to build, so let that be your warning. This project is prep work for the Rebuild the Box series, so I'm not going to install them yet. But like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss out on any new videos, especially the Rebuild the Box series, or when I do install these cabinets. Thanks for all the love and support. I'll see you next time going for a car ride.